Welcome to our second edition of our monthly market wrap up with market numbers and real estate news. Down at the bottom of the crawl, we give the market numbers for San Joaquin County and San Jose County, and in the video description, there is a time index to the stories. Let's get started. Welcome to the second edition of our monthly market wrap. Today is February 16th, 2020, and we have a few top real estate stories that may affect you and your real estate decisions. I'm Bradley Price. I'm Darlene Price, and we are from Sonata Realty in Central California. There's a story circulating on Facebook that California's Attorney General is trying to repeal Proposition 13. And there is also those that claim that it's false. So which is it? Well, it's sort of both. The current plan appears to leave it in place for homeowners, but take it away from businesses. Here's a quick simplified view of what the old Proposition 13 is about. Let's say Grandma and Grandpa bought a house back in the 60s in Fremont for around $18,000. In theory, if they stayed there, it would be paid for by now, or maybe most likely they needed to pull out some equity over the years to get by on hard times but it still could be paid for by now. But wait, now you still have to pay property taxes on that forever. The way it used to go is the county could reassess the property every year to whatever the current market value is and be taxed accordingly. So now grandma and grandpa, trying to make ends meet in their golden years, have to pay tax on a million dollar home just because that is what the California market has done. And not just now, but that tax bill has been climbing every year. This is a problem that has caused many to lose their homes over the years. Back in 1978, the solution was Proposition 13. The proposition made it so that there is a cap of 2% per year that could be added when reassessing your home. So your bill would continually climb, but at a more manageable level. An exception would be a major improvement to your home, which could trigger a reassessment, but only the value that the improvement adds, which seems fair enough. So back to the current situation, the plan is to take this tax break away, only from businesses. But do not be fooled into thinking that that doesn't affect you. First of all, this is just the first step. It will likely hit homeowners next. Secondly, just like grandma and grandpa, a small business cannot afford this burden, and it will drive many out of business or out of state. So anytime there's a ballot measure that is funding something, take a close look at where the money's coming from because it is usually out of your pocket. And by the way, the example of the $18,000 house now worth a million is real. It's my parents' house and they no longer live there, but they're not millionaires, nor can they afford to be taxed as though they are. Also, do not confuse this with the current Proposition 13 on the upcoming ballot, which is also not a decrease in taxes, but an increase in taxes. Is California on the verge of an economic downturn? Surveys show a split that 46% of residents say yes and 54% say no. So that's a little more than half that have a positive outlook. And those that believe the recession is coming say it will likely be 2020 or 21. The most time-tested tool we have to forecast a recession is the yield spread. That is the difference between the 10-year Treasury note, which represents the bond market confidence, and the short-term borrowing rate, which represents the Federal Reserve actions to shrink or grow the economy, and the spread between the two, which indicates the likelihood of a recession one year forward. When the numbers invert, or slip below zero, then a recession is almost certain to occur in the next 12 months. And that number last inverted in mid-2019, meaning mid-2020, will likely see a downturn. So what's next? It is unlikely that the downturn will be drastic, and there's no reason to panic. You have to live somewhere, and it's better to own than to rent. California has a housing shortage, so the housing market can weather the storm. 
If you are flipping properties, you should just be more cautious and have a plan B if things turn on you. If you are planning to sell and leave the state, you might want to do it sooner than later to pocket a little extra and then maybe rent for a little while and then buy where you're going after the prices drop. Remember that home prices, especially in California, will rebound. And as long as you don't get into a position where you have to sell it in a down market, you'll be okay. Just wait out the storm. According to real estate writer Jamie Nasiri, there are five reasons to buy a fixer-upper instead of a perfect place. Firstly, it costs less. Fixer-uppers list for an average of 8% below market value. If you're on a budget or being priced out of the market, this is a way to get your foot in the door. The amount below market does depend on the area, with Phoenix offering the smallest discount and San Francisco averaging around 10%. The second perk of a fixer-upper is that you may be able to finance your renovation. There are a few mortgage options which provide funds for your renovation. Another advantage is that it gives you the opportunity to build value. If you purchase a home where everything has already been updated, it is the seller who reaps the reward of the added value and maximizes their profit. But with a fixer, you may be able to pick up an undervalued property, improve it, and get the benefit of earning extra equity. Another benefit is that you can do the renovations over time. There may be some things that you want to do right away and some things which you can live with for a while, giving you the time to recover from the initial expense of buying the home. And finally, you get to put your own stamp on it. When you buy a home already done, it reflects the taste of the previous owner, or at least the style that they assumed would get them the highest dollar for their home. But this will be your home, and you can fix it up to your exact taste. It is actually one of the primary reasons that people buy a fixer-upper in the first place. There is no question that it can be difficult for the first-time buyer to enter the housing market. The aspiring buyer faces record-breaking low inventory levels, rising rents, and student debt loads that make it difficult to save. But for some, there is a way that does help. They turn to the bank of mom and dad. One third of first time home buyers use help from family or friends to purchase a home in the last year. 27% received a gift from family or friends and 5% took out a personal loan. Many first time buyers combine this with their savings as 78% of first time buyers did use their savings to purchase. Using family as a source for down payment help is most common among younger millennial buyers, ages 20 to 28, compared to other generations, and is more common among unmarried couples. Another way of helping out is allowing a first-time buyer to skip renting costs by living at home so that they can easier save for a down payment. While renting is still the most common prior living arrangement for first-time buyers, it has steadily decreased from a high of 82% to a low of 71%. Among younger millennial, 30% moved directly from a family member's home into home ownership. That's it for this month's market wrap. Stay tuned to our channel for real estate news and coming soon some education on real estate fundamentals as well as our daily neighborhood walk segment, where we show you homes every day for sale by various realtors in different areas. Please feel free to hit the like button and share this video. Comments and story ideas are welcome, and we would love it if you would add us to your channel subscriptions. Thanks for joining us. See you in the market.